Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, October 14th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today, of course, Microsoft's Patch Tuesday, and with that, we got patches for 87 vulnerabilities, 12 of which are rated critical, and six have been previously disclosed. But according to Microsoft, none of these vulnerabilities have been exploited so far. Now, the one vulnerability that sticks out because of its high CUSS score of 9.8 is a remote code execution vulnerability in the Windows TCP IP stack that can be triggered by an ICMP v6 router advertisement packet. So IPv6 is, of course, one of my favorite topics. I just uh, finished uh, teaching the IPv6 section of SEC 503 earlier uh, today here in an online class. Router advertisements are sent out by IPv6 routers in regular instances or in response uh, to a host that just booted up and is looking for a router via a router solicitation. Now, there are a couple things uh, that you usually find in these router advertisements. Uh, You do uh, find the hop limit that a router would like you to use to start out with, the MTU of uh, the network, and then you may find one or more prefixes uh, that are used on the network, and that can then be used by the host to come up uh, with a routable IPv6 address. The one feature that may actually matter here is that there is an option in IPv6 uh, to advertise DNS servers via uh, these router advertisements. And one of the workarounds mentioned here is that you should disable the recursive DNS server feature in ICMPv6. So that's basically a hint that this feature may be to blame for uh, what's uh, going wrong here. It's a little bit a uh, newer feature and not really all that uh, widely used necessarily, uh, but but certainly a standard feature has been around for a reasonable amount of time. I have used it and it usually works quite well. And this really sort of turns a router advertisements into a DHCP light in the sense that by advertising a prefix, you get an IP address. And then by giving you the DNS servers, you got that. And that's you know, usually what you often do in smaller networks in particular with a DHCP. And that's now all rolled into these router advertisements, basically rendering sort of the need uh, for a DHCP server somewhat redundant. Now I heard this uh, vulnerability described as warmable and essentially the idea here is it's a remote code execution vulnerability. So the code that I'm executing on a vulnerable host may as well be used to then send out corrupt router advertisements. There's sort of one limitation and an important limitation to this that router advertisements shouldn't really uh, be routable. So uh, this should not really leave a local network. It's not that a random system on the internet is able uh, to send router advertisements to you. Operating systems, and I checked this uh, with Windows, uh, should uh, ignore any uh, router advertisements comes from the outside network. There's a little trick here that sort of played to enforce this in that these router advertisements, in order to be valid, have to have a hop limit of 255. 255 being the maximum hop limit possible. So if an attacker sends a packet with a hop limit of 255, the first router that passes this packet along will reduce the hop limit by one. So by the time it gets to you, it will be less than 255 and will be ignored. But even if you don't officially support IPv6 in your network, you may still be vulnerable because by default, Windows does enable IPv6, is listening for router advertisements, and you're actually running in an unsupported configuration, according to Microsoft, if you're turning this off. Renato, in our summary of Microsoft patches, also points out CVE 2020, 169.11. This is a remote code execution vulnerability in the Windows graphic device interface. 
very common type of vulnerability. We have seen many of them before and it could be exploited by a malicious web page or a malicious email attachment. The third one that um, Renner is pointing out is approach escalation vulnerability in Hyper-V. Now, uh, this one uh, could also give the attacker elevated privileges on the system. Both of uh, these last two vulnerabilities have a CVSS rating of 8.8. .8. And this month, we also got again an update from Adobe for its Flash Player. It fixes a single arbitrary code execution vulnerability. But aside of this, what you may have noticed today or this week is a pop-up appearing on your system, encouraging you to essentially uninstall Adobe Flash Player. Uh, this is a legitimate uh, pop-up and essentially, particularly on the Mac, I've seen this, uh, you will basically get these warnings that uh, Adobe is about to stop support at the end of the year and you're probably better off just uninstalling Adobe Flash Player. And I encourage you to follow uh, this advice. It may actually be best to first update and then uninstall, just in case the uninstall fails or you have some uh, components left behind. At least now you have the up-to-date components left behind. Well, and that's it for today. So yeah, uh, very busy with the uh, patch Tuesday today. Haven't uh, seen any patches from any other vendors. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow, hopefully with our more regular programming.